Lay Shepherd's Pastor, okay. Lay Shepherd, I get it right. I get it right before we finish. Lay Shepherd's Pastoral uh, Care Ministry. We thank God for them and the uh, great work uh, that they do. And we just Amen. thank God. It's, it's work that a lot of us don't know that they do. Amen? Amen. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, done in private. It's supposed to be done in quiet. Tell folk, I don't need to know everything. Yes, Amen. Amen. I don't want to know everything. Amen. Some things I just need to be on a need to know basis. Amen. Amen. As long as God knows, it's being taken care of. So we thank God for them and the ministry and pray that God would continue to bless them and continue to help them to be a blessing to others. Because you know, a lot of times when you minister to Others, you take some of those things don't go home. They don't. They don't. They don't leave you right away. You know, as much as you want to lay it on the Lord, and when somebody tells you something, it doesn't immediately leave uh, your mind. Uh, sometimes you want to do things that are ungodly to the folk that did things to them, but you can't. You gotta leave it God's hands. So we have to be mindful and pray for them because they they deal with situations that that we 
don't feel people should have to go through in many cases, but we know that people do go through them, and we know that the Lord can ease the pain and ease the sorrow if we let them. Now, those of you who have your Bibles, you can open them up to Isaiah 60, 61, chapter 61, verse 1. It's a familiar passage of scripture. We just thank God for the Spirit. The Spirit being here with us all throughout this service. We pray that God will continue to be with us even through the message. And it reads as follows. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken heart and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Amen. We're going to speak from the topic on uh, this, this Lay Shepherd's Pastoral Care Ministries Anniversary, Healing the Broken Heart. Healing the Broken Heart. Uh, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, we just ask now that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord redeemer and all of God's children to say amen. amen. Healing the broken heart. As we journey through life, we will realize there is always someone whose problems are worse than ours. And we realize that each time the opportunity arises for us to help someone else, we should seize the opportunity to help them. And we never know when we're going to be in a situation where we need help or assistance ourselves. So have you ever needed to be rescued from a, a life-threatening situation? Uh, look at the age of folk uh, here. Uh, I think that most of us, if not all of us, have somewhere in our lives been in a life-threatening situation. Maybe it's a, it was a car accident. Maybe it was a drowning. Maybe it was a disease. Maybe it was fighting in a war. Maybe it was part of gang membership. Uh, maybe it's part of drug or alcohol addiction. Uh, some, other, or some other crisis that could have killed you. Even if you have not personally confronted death, most of us know someone who has. Well, I know I've faced death on more than one occasion. But thanks be to God, I'm yes. still here. Yes. Amen. When I think of this, I think of those 11 young boys in time. Uh, their soccer coach and all the brave rescuers who risked their lives and the one man who gave his life in the attempt to rescue them from that cave. Uh, I can't imagine being trapped in the dark, dingy cave for days without food or water, wondering if anyone is ever going to find you. I can't imagine for days people knowing that we're in there but still not being able to figure out how to rescue us. I can't imagine when the rescuers do make it telling us uh, we have to use scuba gear for hours to, to get out, and we don't even know how to swim. I can't imagine being left for days while others are being rescued. I can't imagine the mental and the physical anguish of these young men, the, they, these young men had to, to go through to endure for over a two-week period, not knowing if they were going to live or die. But when we really think about it, we are all gripped by death. 
No human being escapes death. The grave is inevitable for each and every one of us unless the rapture comes first. But the message of this scripture is that we can be saved. Uh, the gift of salvation has been offered to the human race. Salvation from sin and death can be ours. God sent the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to provide redemption for us. It, it, it is this message that Isaiah the prophet proclaimed. But that's why the uh, lay shepherds pastoral care, what the lay shepherds pastoral care ministry is all about. Taking the message to those who are facing troubled times and letting them know that no matter what you're going through, Amen. Jesus saved. Amen. And letting them know that there is comfort during time of times of trouble in the name of Jesus. Amen. This prophecy was given over 700 years before Jesus Christ ever came to the earth. Right after Jesus' baptism and wilderness temptation, the first thing he did was revisit his hometown of Nazareth. On the Sabbath, he attended worship in the synagogue and personally stood up to read the scripture, choosing this part of scripture to read. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and then 2a. Jesus Christ claimed to be the Messiah the servant of the Lord, the promised savior of the word. Today we, we, we see how the predicted mission of the savior was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. One of the things the scripture tells us is about is that the savior was to be anointed by God's very own spirit. Mm -hmm. All three persons of the Godhead or Trinity are mentioned here. The Spirit, the Lord Jehovah, Yahweh, and the Messiah or Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who fulfilled the mission spelled out in this passage. Over 700 years before Jesus Christ came, it was predicted that God's own Spirit would rest on the Messiah. But the fullness of God's Spirit, by the fullness of God's Spirit, would be the Messiah would be equipped to fulfill his task. And the Holy Scriptures say that when Jesus Christ was baptized, the heavens were opened up and the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. The voice of God was heard saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The very fullness of God himself, the fullness of his Spirit, rested upon the Savior, the Lord Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know you have a lot of folk now Hallelujah. who are going around talking about yeah. uh, there's other ways to God. Mm -hmm. uh, saying that you can get to God by this way. You can get to God through love. But my Bible uh, teaches me yeah. that, uh, that there's no yeah. other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. But at the name of Jesus, every yeah. knee shall bow and every yeah. tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Or they can teach that universalism all they want. Uh, but there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus the Christ. Savior was to be sent into the world on a special mission. Remember, Isaiah was preaching to the people of his day, doing all that he could to give them hope in the midst of a troubling world, of focusing their attention on the future. He pointed them to the coming of the Messiah, for their only hope was the in the Savior of the world. Only he could deliver them from their trials. Only he could deliver them from their temptations. Only he could deliver them uh, from the evil uh, bondages and death of this world. It's the same today. Only God can deliver you from yes. your problems. Only God can deliver you from your yes. addictions. Only God yes. can deliver you from the issues that you have in your life. Yes. Jesus came to, to give us the example throughout his life of what the lay shepherd's pastoral um, care ministry is all about. 
and, and we who follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the things that we, he describes here are the same things that we're supposed to do. Right. Yeah. The Savior's mission was to preach good news to the poor. The poor means not only poor in material possessions, but also poor in spirit. Yes. A person who is poor in spirit acknowledges their helplessness before God, acknowledges their spiritual needs. A person knows that he or she is solely dependent upon God to meet their needs. They acknowledge their inability to face life and eternity apart from God, recognizing that the real blessings of life and eternity come only from a right relationship yes. with God. Yes. A person poor in spirit is humble, acknowledging that they are no better or no more superior than the next person. <clears throat> It doesn't matter how much fame you have. It doesn't matter how much fortune you have. It doesn't matter how much power you have. It doesn't matter who you know and who knows you. Right. You're no better than anybody else. Right. Their attitude towards others is not proud or haughty or not superior or overbearing. They acknowledge that every human being is a real person, a, a person who has a significant yes. contribution yes. to make to yes. society and to the world. Yes. They approach life with a, a humility and appreciation, not as though life owes them, but as though they owe life. Yes. That's right. Christ came to preach the salvation of God to the poor, those who, who readily know they need to be saved, and to these God promised the kingdom of heaven. Yes. It should anger us that we have a president who is not poor in spirit. It should anger us that, that we have turned into a, a society that turns our people away, uh, who are searching for a better a life for themselves and their families. It should anger us that people who are at the borders having their children taken away from them. Yes. It should anger us that public yes. perception is that there are no blonde-haired, blue-eyed folk in America who are here illegal. We, we don't see them getting marched down. Yes. It should anger us that young African Amer American that a young African American boy can't even deliver newspapers yes. without the police being called on. Yes. It should anger us that we go around killing each other like our lives don't matter. It should anger us every time that we see somebody being oppressed. It should anger us every time we see a misjustice being done to one because when a misjustice is done to one, a misjustice is done to all. It should anger us with a righteous indignation. We as a church we as the lay shepherds ministry must deal with some of these families and let them know that there is still hope. Yes. We have to let them know uh, that goodwill will triumph over evil. Yes. We have to let them know that even in this yes. bleak society in which we live, Jesus will still provide yes. the answer. Yes. was to heal the broken heart. Throughout every generation, there are masses who are broken hearted just as there were during Isaiah's day. Whether you want to admit it or not, there's folks sitting right here in this congregation right now who are broken hearted. People who are crushed with grief, people who are devastated by divorce, people who are overwhelmed with financial problems, people who are, who are blemished, blemished by sin, people who are deserted by their friends, people who are consumed with loneliness, people who are yes, ravaged yes. by disease, Peace and people who are enslaved yes. with the sin of this world. And folk right here yes. Yes. with smiles on their faces, dressed up sometimes in their Sunday best, all of us. Yes. 
from the pulpit to the door have issues. Yes. Have yes. problems are yes. broken hearted at times. Yes. Yes. A host of experience cause all kinds of suffering for all people. Indeed, internal and external pain can be so deep that they break the human heart. Yes. To heal and bind up the heart was one of the purposes for which God was to send the Messiah. Yes, thank you. Once Jesus came into the world, he immediately began to heal the brokenhearted, and he continues his healing ministry even today. Yes. Any broken heart can be restored by the touch of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. He longs to bind up and to heal Yes. The broken heart. <clears throat> Lay Shepherd's ministry and church, we need to let them know that through Jesus, the broken heart, it can be healed. One songwriter said he healed the broken heart and then he sets the captives free. He makes the lame to walk again and it causes the blind to see he is able. He is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Let them know that whatever they're going through, yes. Jesus can and will help them through. Yes. Yes. Yes, he does. In the Savior's mission was to proclaim freedom to those held captive. Mm -hmm. This was not a promise that all the criminals in the world would be given a get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. The meaning refers to the two captivating forces from which people cannot escape. The forces of sin and death. Every human being sins and cannot help but sin. Everybody in here sins. You all, all admit you all sin? Oh, I sin. Okay, okay. If you all ain't admitting it, you all were just sinning then because you all was lying. <laughs> Even the Apostle Paul said, the things that I want to do, those are the things that I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, those are the very things that I do. Amen. Yes. And then every human being dies and cannot keep from dying. That's right. You know, folk be doing all that they can. Remember Michael Jackson? You know, Michael, Michael what, what Mike said, he said he, he was going to build him this thing that he could uh, be in. And so when they found out what he was sick of and what he was going to die of, um, they, 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 would just, they would put him in this encasement and they would freeze him. And then he would have them wake him up when they found the cure for it and give him the cure. Oh, uh, but one night Mike went to sleep and never woke up. Uh, uh, you can delay dying, but you're not going to prevent dying. That's right. Yeah. And, and he couldn't even, all the money he had, couldn't even delay. Yes. Matter of fact, the stuff he was trying to do uh, caused it. Yes. But we'll get into my, his issues another day. <laughs> the Savior, the human race has been taken charge by sin and taken hostage by sin and death, but the Savior was to liberate and set the human race from the bondages of sin and death. Mm -hmm. No human being has the energy, the power, or ability to free him or herself. Mm -hmm. Only God can redeem us. Only God can deliver us from the wickedness and death. Yes. God has chosen to redeem us through the Savior, Thank you, Jesus. the Lord Jesus Christ. God himself has paid the ransom for yes. our release, the ransom of a, a life for a life. Thank he you. gave the life of his son so that every person might Thank be set you, free Jesus. from the slavery of sin and death. Yes. As a result, every captive can be redeemed through the blood of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for the yes. sin of the human being. Hallelujah. The Savior's mission was to proclaim the year of God's salvation and the coming day of judgment. The acceptable year or time of the Lord's favor. The NIV, I think, actually says the era or the age of salvation. Yes. When the Messiah came into the world, he was proclaimed the message of God's salvation. 
From the point of the Savior's coming to the end of human history, the testimony of man's liberation from sin and death and the coming judgment would be declared. God's favor or, or, or grace was to be poured upon the people. And because of God's grace, people could now be saved. It was the task of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to make known the grace and the salvation of God for the human race. But it was also his task to make known the vengeance of God. Yes. For the day of judgment was coming. God was to execute vengeance against all who rejected the Messiah and his salvation. It was a God-given task of the Messiah to proclaim both the salvation and the judgment. We all yes. like to hear about salvation, amen? Amen. We like to hear about the good stuff. We like to hear about, you know, salvation and, and all the good stuff going to heaven and all the stuff walking on the uh, streets that are paved with gold. Uh, but there's also a judgment. Uh, you know, there's also the warning people about the coming judgment and the, yes. the vengeance of God. There's a hell. Yes, there is. And there's also a hell. I, uh, you know, some folk don't believe in hell. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. But I believe in hell, and I don't want to go there. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. But, but if you believe in Jesus Christ, yes. because Lord tell you, I have to worry about yes. it. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why I tell yes. folk, don't, don't believe in, don't, don't, don't. Don't worry about revelation. And, you know, everybody be getting nightmares. I said, I said, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you ain't going to be here. Nothing stuff happening anyway. You ain't got to worry about it. Amen. The Savior's mission was to comfort all who mourned or grieved. A person mourns due to being bruised physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually. Mourning can be caused by such things as disability, injury, disease, pain, fire, natural hardships, marital problems, loss of a loved one, unemployment, and a host of other situations that we find ourselves in sometimes on a daily basis. In essence, the, the Savior was to comfort all of those who were burdened under the weight of their suffering. When Jesus Christ came, he reached out to console and reassure those who were hurt. Mm -hmm. Even today, uh, he will comfort any who turn to him with their yes. pain Amen. and suffering. Yes, he does. Lay shepherds, pastoral care, ministry, and church, Jesus gives us the perfect example of, of what we are called to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we are to preach the good news to the poor, heal the yes. broken heart, and proclaim yes. freedom to those that are captive. Let folk know that Jesus yes. saves. Let folk know that there will be a day of judgment and comfort those who mourn. Church, we all have problems from the pulpit to the door. We all have issues. Sometimes we just need to call someone who can tell us that everything is going to be all right. A lay shepherd's pastoral care ministry, let them know that no matter what they're going through, Jesus is there to see them through. Bad marriage, Jesus is there. Financial problems, Jesus is there. Loss of a loved one, Jesus is there. Abuse of relationship, Jesus is there. Addiction, Jesus is there. Unemployment or underemployment, Jesus is there. Health problems, Jesus is there. Difficult decisions to make, Jesus is there. Depressed, Jesus is there. Bad president, Jesus is there. Bad government decisions. Jesus is there. Whatever the problem is, whatever situation you find yourself, Jesus can and Jesus will fix it. If you live, let them know that Lord is God. They got God on their side. Everything will be all right. Shepherds Pastoral Care Ministry. I got it right by the time. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes all you can tell me, I may not be able to heal your broken heart or solve your problem, but I can lead you to the one who can. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 Rick Warren recently treated. When people are in deep pain, they don't need explanations, mm -hmm. advice, mm -hmm. encouragement, or even scripture. They just need you to show up 
and shut up. Just be with them. It is the healing ministry of presence. Doors of the church open.